So Logan, thanks for joining us today. It's much appreciated. And uh, for the guys at home who uh, don't know you, could you just, we'll start by just introducing yourself. Yeah, name is Logan Parker. I'm the recruiting coordinator at Army West Point. Uh, born and raised in Odessa, Texas, and have been in Army now for a year. Um, just the, the baseball story, and we can get into a little bit later, just the recruiting process, how it worked for me. Um, started out under-recruited at a high school, um, just an average high school player, went to a junior college, um, left New Mexico Junior College, went to the University of Cincinnati, spent two years there, um, and was fortunate enough to get drafted uh, by the Cincinnati Reds in the 12th round and played four years with them um, up to double A and got released and ultimately spent my last two years in independent ball. Um, then got into coaching, coached at a junior college down in Texas um, in my hometown at Odessa College for seven years. And, and I've been here for almost a year now. That's great. So obviously you've been a baseball lifer. This has been your, what you do. This is what you yeah. know. So, you know, I'm in the same bucket, you know, I've been, has been my life just doing baseball. So for these younger guys that are trying to have that next level opportunity and keep their baseball life going beyond high school, I thought it would be helpful if we went over just a few questions because I, I get this a lot from players. And so, you know, first question I, I want to throw your way. Is there's a lot of players that are concerned about visibility because obviously they need to be seen at some point for opportunities to happen. But, uh, there's an ability piece to that. And so while well, you need visibility, and is it a good thing if players are pushing for visibility if the ability is not in alignment yet? Like where would you – how would you kind of share on that topic? Because a lot of people want to send videos and mm -hmm. feel like they're out there. What would you say to guys at home? Uh, I would encourage you to send videos, but I'd also encourage you to do your homework on the program. Um, if you're sending videos to a, a Division One school, for instance, that is trying to compete on a national level and, and win regional tournaments and go to Supers and have a chance to go to Omaha and the skill set doesn't match, you're, you're basically wasting your time putting that video together. Um, so I think the skill set has to match. I think that you can do some digging on, on players' rosters and, and these teams and look at um, do my physical attributes match right now where these guys are at? Um, if, if you're an undersized guy, does that team have undersized guys? Um, what do you do well um, if you are that undersized player? Um, are, are you a speed guy? Do you, what intangibles can you bring to that program? Um, and if you are reaching out via video or email or however that is working for those guys, um, explain those intangibles, like what you can actually bring to that program. Um, I think would be very helpful. That's great. So in the areas where you have things to show, it's great to show it. And in the other areas, you know, there's no need to show it because it's only going to be a strike against the player. So. Right, right. Keep the unknowns the unknown. And players, you know, for everyone at home, nobody's perfect. So uh, coaches understand that, you know, there are going to be limitations to certain dimensions of your game. And, you know, that's where the conversation, getting to know a player, how well you're working through that. Are you doing it on your own? Are you doing it with capable people? But if you're moving toward working through that, then you become a guy that, that becomes of real interest. So um, so as we move forward here, here uh, you know, a lot of these players, they meet coaches along the way through these tournaments. Sometimes they're at exposure events where they, they pay to be at a showcase or they're at a college venue. Okay. And, you know, along the way, they, they have some communication where somebody along the way says to a player, nice job. You know, they had a clean inning or got a nice base hit to end a game that's in the ninth inning. And, you know, does that mean you're being recruited because somebody talked to you or because somebody, you know, you're in the database and you got a questionnaire from a college? Are you now actively being recruited or is this a first step that people need to understand how to differentiate? Yeah, I think that hit the nail on the head. It is the first step. Um, our job as college recruiters is to shift through everything, right? There's a lot of things that get emailed. and There's a lot of phone calls and conversations that go on a daily basis. Um, so it's our job to kind of cipher through all of it. Um, so we're trying to 
basically, if we say good job, somebody says good job, are you being recruited? No. To answer your question in a in an easy route, some people are just nice guys, right? Like I was born and raised that way. If somebody does a good job, I'm going to tell them, hey, good job. Does that mean I'm recruiting you? No. I think it's very obvious. At least I can speak for our program. When we're recruiting you, you'll know. It, it'll be active phone calls, you know, once or twice a week. It'll be text messages. You'll know um, or you should know um, if that college is interested and they are actually recruiting you. So bottom line, you guys and every other program is going to do your the due diligence. Part of that is building relationships. And so you will be very clear. And that way players, if they're not sure, you know, then you're probably not at that next level yet with a with a program. Do you agree with that, Logan? Yes, 100%. Okay, so as we move forward here, uh, so these players that are unknown to programs, uh, some of them know which programs they want to go to, and they've done their homework, they think they're a fit. So for these players, what would you recommend? Um, get in front of them as much as you can. Send them as much as you can. Um, I think a, a hey coach touching base with you, um, whether it's a text message or an email, just reaching back out. Here's my updated video. Here's my updated measurables. Uh, last time we spoke, I weighed 162 pounds. I've recently worked on this. I'm up to 170 pounds now, improving my speed, whatever the case may be. Um, I think visibility, right, go back to the first question. The only thing that Division One coaches can't do right now is go see players. Um, so the more active you are in trying to pursue that program, it's not annoying. Like a lot of people are like, I don't want to annoy that program. I don't want to annoy that coach. It's not annoying. It's a refresher. You know, maybe we are communicating with two other guys that day and we didn't anticipate having a phone call with you that day. But you know what? I just got an updated video. Perfect. Let me go look at it and let's talk again. Um, so that would be my suggestion and make sure that both sides fit, right? Just cause you're interested in that program doesn't mean they're interested in you. Um, if it's been very generic on, from the program to you, then there's probably not a whole lot of interest, right? So if, if that program's actively recruiting you and you're interested in them, then you can make those two things work. That's great. So, I mean, obviously, like you mentioned earlier, relevance to the program really matters. And that's where players need to do their due diligence. And I, I share with players all the time not to underestimate how good next level players are. And mm -hmm. you know, the gap in high school and college is significant. And a lot of players become very significant players. You're just talking about your life story, how you turned into a, a high draft pick and played pro ball. But out of high school, you weren't as far along, but it doesn't mean you're not a great player. And I think that's what people need to understand. Everyone in their baseball journey hits these levels at different points. So you can't take it personally if you're not getting that real interest immediately. You just have to, it's just telling you, keep doing the work. And yeah. so, like for me, I think players get confused here where my question that I'm leading toward is, uh, you know, when players evaluate themselves, a lot of them say they're Division One players because that's what in their head they've always wanted, okay? Mm -hmm. And sometimes their stats in high school, they batted 420, you know, they have a 97-mile-hour ball exit speed on a tee. So they think that makes them a Division One player. And so, you know, the question is, is that what creates – is it that just because they want Division One and they have a, a stat there that says – you're, you have something that you can do that's capable. Is that what makes you a Division One operator? Is there more about this than just a stat? Like, are you recruiting on a stat, or is it more some of the intangibles, like how you handle adversity, how you compete, and all that whole package together is really what defines the player? 